with all the new changes to Hillers and Endwalker boasting to be one of the best expansions thus far, we need a new practical healing guide for Astro. This is an updated version of my previous guide and we'll be going over all things beginner and Astro for new and casual players to get into healing. If you are a beginner or casual player that is hesitant on playing healer class, I'm going to provide you a practical healing guide from level 1 to end game. This is not a pep talk or encouraging words. This is a step-by-step -step guide in order to build confidence and begin understanding the job. These are my personal opinions as always, and if you think of something else, great, you do you. For everyone else who wants a little help, this guide's for you. As always, we are operating under the intention of being as helpful as possible in terms of healing and DPSing and providing damage mitigation. Without further ado, let's jump into the main tips you need to know. Astro is still difficult, mainly due to the card draw specific abilities. Albeit this was simplified in Endwalker, so there's a lot less stress in obtaining the optimal cards. But now it's just left up to pure RNG and almost completely random. Astro has turned to a pure healer just like White Mage, and Astro is a fast job to play. And once you get comfortable, you're gonna shock yourself with how quick the gameplay is between the cards, decreased cast time, OGCDs, your hands are going to be busy. With the downscaling and stat squish, you will probably be healing a lot more than usual in all content, depending on the setup of your group. I have noticed in many dozens of the dungeon runs I've done that I'm having to really kind of keep a close eye on the tank's health with the downscaling numbers. It's just something to keep in mind as you're playing through. I just feel like it's a little less forgiving than it used to be. Gearing up, now more than ever, we are really feeling the under-geared healing and tanking, so you always have to make sure to have the appropriate gear for your job. I will have a Gearing with Poetics video linked in the description box for gear 1 through 89, which will be more than satisfactory that you can watch after this video. Astro and Sage are now considered more advanced healer roles in my opinion. They just have a little bit more going on than Scholar and White Mage, which tend to be more beginner-friendly jobs. Reading your tooltips is more important than ever on top of finishing this video in its entirety. I will explain each ability as well as dungeon pulling. We operate under Always Be Casting, ABC, which is the main theme of all jobs. You do not want to be just standing around. You can be healing, damaging, or dotting your enemies damage over time. Lastly, one of the most important things that I really wanted to mention is the slight change to Benefic and Benefic 2. Benefic 2 is still better in every case, even though Benefic got a 15% crit chance for Benefic 2 added. 15% is not that much, and you're wasting time where you could be damaging by just casting one Benefic 2. Of course, this is only the case at lower levels as we are going to work our way towards not using global cooldowns at all. But do not be fooled in thinking Benefic 1 is all of a sudden a million times better now, just because of that 15% chance. MP management is a non-issue more than ever. You will have enough at all times with Astro. Let's jump into 1 to 29 content. At this stage, healing will be very, very straightforward. Dungeon pooling will look something like this. Tank pulls first mob. Apply your dots or damage over time for which Astro is combust as the tank is running. Once the tank stops, you'll malefic until mob is dead. You do not have access to anything else. This will be the same for boss pulls as well, as well as just keeping up your dots for maximum damage. Most of the time the enemies die before you have to reapply the dots though. We will focus on keeping lucid dreaming up if needed, but I haven't seen too much of an issue with MP at this level. Helios is a useful AoE heal if needed for group heal, but most of the time Benefic and Benefic 2 when it becomes available will be more than enough to keep tank up. Essential Dignity is kind of your oh crap heal when the tank is 50% or below, but don't be afraid to utilize it as a main heal as it's our first off global cooldown and can be weaved in between attacks. You can start using light speed for heals or DPS and getting used to activating it. I like to use it for damage at this point for some 2.5 reduced cast time. This is very effective later on paired with some endgame abilities that we'll cover later. Let's move on to 30 to 49 content. We now have access to our job specific abilities which is the card draw system. When you use this ability, you draw a card which will be held until you use it again. These cards will then allow you to buff your DPS teammates with a 6% damage buff for 15 seconds, as well as giving you 5% of your total MP back. When you draw a card, it will have a blue border or a pink border. The blue border is the melee DPS and tanks buff, and the pink border is for ranged DPS, casters, and physical range, and healers. 
If you were to use it on yourself, then you'll always get a 6% damage buff. If you were to use a card on the opposite job it's intended for, example, a blue border on a ranged DPS, then they will only receive 3% damage buff. So we always want to make sure that we're using blue for melee and take and pink for rage and healers. That being said, we don't want to override a buff, so if you have to use one and one already has a buff, then just give it to the other person if it's the wrong color. It's not optimal and that's okay, but you just have to get to used to casting it. It's better for there to be damage buffs than there not to be. At level 40, we have Redraw, which will allow you to change the card twice, which you can use to get a different card and color. If you need to make sure both DPS are buffed with the appropriate color, you can use Redraw to re-roll for that color. Remember, we are on RNG though, so you might not get what you want. We also have Aspected Benefic, which is your regen over time, and Aspected Helios, which is your group regen over time. While Gravity is your AoE damage ability that you'll be spamming for any mobs with two or more enemies, with this, dungeon pools will look something like this. Draw a card to get it on cooldown, tank pulls first mob, Aspected Benefic, regen, after tank pulls, play your first card on a DPS as they're usually damaging as they're running. Dot enemy, draw another card, dot enemy, play card, dot enemy, refresh regen, heal as needed, and gravity away. You'll pop lucid dreaming as needed, but I don't really see that being a problem at this level. You can also weave in an aspected Helios if you feel you need two regens on the tank. I do recommend this at lower levels if you're having a really hard time healing, as for all new healers to give you some safe slack for your tank until you get comfortable understanding how the tank's health drops in relevance to the enemies. This seems like a lot going on, but really what you're learning to do at a very early level is what we call weaving. The idea here is that you can damage and draw, damage and play cards in order to have optimal DPS. We can achieve this because drawing and playing cards are off global cooldowns, meaning they do not reset our main GCDs, which are Combust and Malefic. This is why we weave these in between damage abilities to keep uptime on damage. Do not be frustrated if you do not get this right away, as you'll need to practice weaving the abilities as you're running as well as during boss pools. It just will come in time. The best advice I can offer you is to continue running dungeons at this level until you feel comfortable with the timing or even find a practice dummy and practice casting a GCD and then drawing or dotting, drawing or dotting. And this will allow you to figure out the timing that works for you for weaving. Let's move on to 50 plus content. At this point, you have the basis for what dungeon pools and boss pools will look like, and this does not really change. All we do now is add in new skills that we get into the base rotation and upgrade things to be more efficient. I will have a separate video for the controller setup for all these practical guides that will be linked in the description box that you can watch after finishing this video. As I get a lot of questions on how I set up my controller. And yes, I do play on PC. 50 to 60 content. If you have noticed, we no longer get divination, which is our group damage ability by using the card system. It's an entirely new ability, which is great as we can cast this for optimal damage and not worry about the RNG of the card system. We also get level 50 synastry, which is just an oh crap hill that I use. If you're finding that the tank is getting really low on health and you've run out of OG CDs and essential dignity, you have to cast Benefic 2 to keep the tank alive. Cast Sinistry first, which will practically buff your Benefic 2 by 40%. Sinistry only works with single target healing ability Benefic 2. And because of this, we don't use it as the first form of healing because we'd rather be damaging than casting GCDs. I just keep it in reserve for when the pools get a little out of hand and I need the extra little help. This does not work with OG CDs. Side note, you can always use this too in trials if both tanks are going to take damage and you can heal one while the other one will get the 40% healing from that original spell. We also have unlocked Astrodyne. I will simplify this as much as I can. When you cast a card in battle, because you can't cast it out of battle or you won't get the sign, you will receive one of the three signs attached, solar, lunar, and celestial. The goal is to get three different types of signs, but since we no longer have divination attached, this is not always going to happen. At best, you'll want at least two different signs, which should be pretty possible. The benefits of Astrogyne are only applied to yourself and no one else, and they are as follows. One type of sign will be an MP regeneration ability. Think of this as a lucid dreaming effect. Two types of signs will be MP regeneration and reduce spell cast time, recast time, and auto attack. Three types of signs will be MP regeneration, reduce spell cast time, recast time, auto attack, 
and increase in healing potency and damage potency by 5%. You can see why we want to shoot for two or three signs as it will be a huge buff to our own DPS and healing. This will not always happen though as we have no way of guaranteeing signs like we did before. So you're just stuck with the RNG gods for this. Level 58, Collective Unconscious. Treat this ability solely as a party-wide regen or tank regen as it's an OG CD which can be weaved. The damage mitigation is great, but really only useful when there's a stack marker, as you don't really not want to be casting damage abilities for 15 seconds. So position yourself appropriately and cast. Even if you do not see the bubble, it will still apply the regen effect to any who would have been in range at the time of casting. You'll want to prioritize this in front of Aspected Helios when you need a second regen with your Aspected Benefic. Level 60 Celestial Opposition. This is literally just a slightly weaker Aspected Helios, but for free and you can weave it. This is another ability that you can prioritize as a regen with your Aspected Benefic. Now with so many new abilities, the goal is to keep two regens up on the tank at all times between Aspected Benefic, Celestial Opposition, and Collective Unconscious. Honestly, with two signs and gravity, you're going to be doing a lot of damage in a short amount of time anyway. If your tank is rotating their cooldowns, then you'll have little to no problems. If not, then you might need to throw in a few GCD heals to keep them alive. Try to at least have one regen up on the tank at all times in battle. This is just a general rotation in a personal way I play, and I literally have no problems keeping tanks alive and providing a lot of DPS. Level 62, Earthly Star. We're now getting into the cool thing about Astro, which is delayed healing and attacking. You cast this ability and it puts a giant ring on the ground, which will have a timer. You can activate this or let the timer run out. You almost always want this to upgrade after the 10 seconds for bigger damage and bigger healing. How you can utilize this ability is as a big burst heal and damage on tank pulls. Most tanks will pull two mobs. As you approach the second mob, you can place this where you think the tank will stop. Most of the time, because of the huge range that got updated, you'll be fine if you place it in the center of the mob enemies. As your tank health starts to drop, you can either wait for this to detonate or detonate it for a huge heal as well as damaging the enemies. This is going to be an essential to keep on cooldowns at all times during pools and boss battles. Level 70 Minor Arcana and Crown Play. We now have access to another card system. Not as complex, but a little more to do which can be frustrating in managing two cards. This one is a lot simpler though. During battle, you can draw an arcane card, Lord or Lady. The red Lord of Crowns card will be a damage AoE spell used in mobs and bosses. The white Lady of Crowns card is an AoE healing spell. The great thing about this ability is you can technically hold on to the card until the 60 second cooldown. I would not hang on to it for too long though, but you can optimize when to use them. Using Lord for extra DPS or using Lady for some extra OGCD heals is just a nice extra ability to have. I have these placed near my other cards on my cross hotbar to keep it in one compact little place as well as you can see it on the job gauge. Level 74, Celestial Intersection. This is our go-to ability with Aspected Regen at the beginning of pools. This will not only heal for 200 potency, but also apply a shield, so you generally want to cast this when the tank has taken a hit of damage to utilize both the heal and the shield. Most of the time, he will get attacked as he's pulling, so you don't have to really worry about waiting. Level 76, Horoscope. This is another delay healing spell, 10 seconds, or you can upgrade this with a Helios or Aspected Helios after casted. I generally just weave this in during a tank pull, but for a boss pull, I will cast this with Aspected Helios right before the battle as it will last 30 seconds, which is just about when a boss will probably do a room-wide damage ability. And it's practically free healing for you to focus on damage and card pooling instead. Level 80, Neutral Sect. They did not change this ability, which is awesome, granting you a regen and shield and a healing potency buff of 20%. This is still game-breaking as it ever was. I generally hold on to this if I struggle in a dungeon or a boss is just massacring the DPS who are standing in AoEs. This paired with light speed for technically instant GCD heals are pretty legendary and usually more than enough for a sticky situation. Level 86, Exaltation. This is the truest tank buster ability if there ever was one. Damage mitigation plus heal after effect ends. I use this on trash pulls all the time right after aspected benefic or when the tank pulls their second mob. Mostly used on all those huge tank busters you'll start seeing near the end game from 80 to 90 and if continually used usually lines up on the cooldown. 
for the next tank buster. But don't sleep on this ability for trash pulls, it just makes your life super easy. Cast this as a tank is coming to the second mob for some good old damage mitigation. Level 90, Macro Cosmos. AoE damage as well as a delayed healing according to how much damage you and your party have taken. When casted, all party members within range will get Macro Cosmos buff. This will record damage as your party takes it and heal you and them for 50% of that damage within the 15 second duration on top of a 200 potency heal. So basically this is a damage AoE ability, a 200 potency heal plus 50% of damage healed. I personally just treat this as another earthly star with damage up front. This is great for trash pulls as you damage the enemies and put a delayed healing timer on your tank. Honestly, as you can see with all these abilities, I really never find myself using every single one as most of the time, a few of them are pretty easily able to keep your tank healthy and very situational to gear, tank using cooldowns and mob pulls. Hopefully this guide can help demystify healing with Astro and give you some simplified ways to think about the spells and the abilities. If you get any value out of this video, then don't forget to limit break three that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of all my other practical healing guides coming out. I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support it really allows me to keep creating content for this channel. All things channel related, rather supporting or connecting with me, you can find in the link tree in the description box down below. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker guides, then you can click here.